Good morning, everybody. Um, what a pleasure to be here with you today. My name is Francesco Bulo. I'm a faculty at UC Santa Barbara, and I would like to talk to you about uh, today, about my personal perspective on epidemiological models, their history, and some analysis results. It's a great pleasure to be joining you for the focus session on modeling in epidemics uh, for the uh, at Tripoli CDC. I'm sorry not to be there in person with you all, but uh, we will have to make this system um, work out. And I would like to uh, thank the uh, kind organizer of the focus session as well as the organizer of CDC. First of all, as we start, I, I would like to acknowledge the terrible impact of the COVID uh, pandemic and all of the um, healthcare professionals and, and essential frontline workers who uh, endangered their own life in order to provide us all with uh, critical services throughout this difficult time. And I think we owe them all a great uh, deal of gratitude. I also would like to thank my co-authors uh, in this work. Um, with Pedro, we did some work on um, simplicial uh, models that I'll briefly touch upon. Uh, with Wenjun, uh, Kevin, and, and Sandro, we talked about um, SIR network multi-group models, which, which is what I'll talk about in the third part of the presentation today. Um, so yeah, this is my outline. I'll talk about some um, historical notes, present some models, and then do a little bit of analysis. So the, the history of uh, uh, epidemiological models and viruses starts with uh, um, early work by Daniel Bernoulli in 1760 uh, on um, one of the worst um, virus that ever vexed uh, mankind, which is uh, uh, smallpox. Um, and um, um, with his uh, Daniel Bernoulli's mathematical analysis of um, variolation, which was inoculation with the mild strain of the virus. And there was a, an interesting mathematical analysis to evaluate the long-term benefits of violation versus the risk of immediate death. So it was quite, quite a, a challenge to deal with it. And um, already there, it was very interesting to see how mathematics was able to provide a tentative result, uh, even though, of course, it was based upon empirical data. So over the following centuries, numerous critical results were obtained. William Hamer obtained, um, uh, was the first to talk about compartments susceptible, infected, and uh, recovered are the three compartments for some of these uh, diseases, as well as the fact that in some cases that the density is the product of the density of susceptible and in infective that gives rise to new infections. And then the landmark work by Kermot and McKendrick uh, identified the existence of an epidemic threshold about which there would be an epidemic outbreak. Hmm? So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And they were the first to introduce mathematics, differential equation and calculus. Uh, a paper that I'm very fond of, it's a wonderful 1976 paper by Lymanovich in New York, where multi group models for the first time are introduced. A notable equilibrium uh, theorem result for uh, ordinary differential equations over compact convex forward invariant sets is, is defined, is provided. And finally, this is the first reference that identifies the spectral radius of the contact graph as being a very important quantity to, to consider in the definition of the uh, reproduction number. So um, there is a wonderful survey in the year 2000 by uh, Herbert Hethcote, which I, I do recommend. And it does, it does already point out that already at that point in time, uh, you know, a very large number of models had already been proposed and, and analyzed. So this is a, this is a rich literature. Uh, here I am providing the specific uh, DOI links uh, in case you are interested, you can download these papers quite easily nowadays. And all, all of these models over the centuries have provided a, um, you know, a mathematical framework to think about this, uh, these problems, epidemic problems, and, and of course, based on data, the attempt to perform predictions about the long-term evolution of, of the epidemic. So the classic SIR scalar model is the one in which um, each individual in the population belongs to one of three possible states. Um, and uh, there are transitions. This is a spontaneous transition from infected to recover, whereas the transition described in the first arrow, arrow uh, requires the interaction between individuals in both, uh, in both compartments. And that is why when you look at the equation, you do have a nonlinearity that appear for transitions that require individuals in two departments, whereas you have linear transitions for the cases in which the transitions are, sorry, linear dependence for the cases in which the transitions are uh, spontaneous and independent of interactions. Now, um, 
that, that that's model one. So this numbering is, is just for, for my own record, this particular talk. Uh, this is a very simple model. It's been fully analyzed. I'll show you some simple results later. Um, of interest in my talk today are multi-group models. So I will be interested in understanding uh, an, a number of individuals or equivalently, um, and could be uh, the number of homogeneous groups in an heterogeneous population. Hmm? And yet the, the homogeneous group could be grouped based on spatial position, based on age, behavior, uh, gender, uh, um, social degree, and so forth, other characteristics. Hmm? So you, you may be talking about, when I talk about multi-group, the groups could be, could be uh, collected in a number of different ways. And of course, even here, of course, you have transitions from susceptible to infected and from infected to recovered. So uh, this model is characterized by various parameters, a contact rate A, describing how likely it is that individual I and J at what rate do they meet? So AIJ would describe that. And there is an infection rate that would, of course, uh, play in, in the following way. So the, the likelihood that an individual um, uh, I would, in fact, be uh, infected when meeting an individual J who is infected, I being susceptible, is proportional to AIJ beta delta T. So the likelihood of meeting, the infection rate, and the duration of, of contact. Um, um, and finally, we have a, a recovery rate, uh, gamma i. So it turns out that this is a stochastic model uh, and that um, it's natural to perform an analysis looking at the expected value of the infection variable, capital X i, uh, which happens to be also equal to the probability that the individual i is infected, though they're essentially that group high as a certain um, um, fraction of infected individuals in that in that group. And when one performs this analysis, it's well known that uh, one obtains a differential equation for the evolution of these quantities, which does not satisfy moment closure. And so it is, uh, in general, uh, difficult to obtain an exact nonlinear model that can, of course, capture the evolution of the expected value of the of the stochastic Marco Markovian model. So um, in mean field analysis, um, there is, or I'm, as I'm presenting here, there is a so-called um, independence assumption, which is, of course, only approximately satisfied in, in some cases, or, or maybe it's a poor approximation in others. And, and this approximation does lead to a closed form, ordinary, nonlinear ordinary differential equation defined over a network. I'm going to refer to this as the multi-group SIR model. It's model two. And um, this is based upon contact. Hmm? Um, now, there is a number of interesting connections. For example, in, in, in physics, uh, um, much attention has been dedicated to models where the groups in our multi-group model are defined by individuals with the same degree, with the same social degree. And so this is an equation that, that you may find in that literature where the time derivative of the fraction of rho i hmm, depends upon the transmission rate, which is a function of the degree, and by certain probabilities. I don't want to talk about this model in detail other than to say that there is a wonderful reference by Donofrio uh, demonstrating how, in fact, these uh, degree-based models are closely related to the multi-group model that I am talking about. Um, also, there is a rich literature on models whereby not only do individuals interact through a contact uh, rate matrix A, but they also um, disperse and, and travel. So this is a model tree. So there's not only a contact rate matrix, but also there is a mobility transition rate matrix. And so you model mobility as a continuous time Markov chain. And the model that I have depicted for you in the previous slide just and is modified by taking into account for this for this mobility. And so this is an early reference about mobility-based um, uh, infection models. So finally, it's also very interesting to think about models that are capable of capturing situations where there may be social aggregation, large gatherings, and, and groups of individuals that meet. And these are can be modeled using simplicial and high order interaction. Uh, so here there is a, a model in which you either imagine that I can be infected because of a pairwise interaction or I can be infected also through the fact that it is meeting with more than one infected individual at once. 
So there's wonderful theory, and I'll refer you to this reference available on, in the archive to, to review that. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of research going on on modeling. I know the speaker later in my session, uh, Professor Giordano, will talk about the about their model, uh, which which is here on the right. There are there are SIR models that have vital dynamics, you know, birth and death, and that uh, and that end up exhibiting different different uh, uh, behavior from what I'm going to show. But um, I'll, I'll leave this uh, for for other speakers, and I'm going to fo focus on uh, the model uh, one and two. More specifically, I'm interested in, in talking to you about what's known about model two, and reviewing everything that is fully known about model one. And so, you know, in, in short, uh, in short detail, the scalar SIR model is fully understood, and it's well known that even if you start with, um, and here's the picture at the bottom, right? Even if you start with a population that is essentially fully susceptible and just a very small fraction of, of um, infected individual, the number of infected uh, has a rapid exponential growth at the beginning, the epidemic outbreak of Kermak McCormick, and then it reaches a peak value at the peak time, and then it drops exponentially fast. Hmm? And so whether you, uh, whether you are um, to the left of the peak and grows up exponentially or you're to the right of the peak and the solution uh, falls down, depends upon the uh, basic reproduction number or not. Mm -hmm. There is a simple formula for it here. It's related to, you know, how many contacts per unit time, what's the transmission rate, how many, how many unit, uh, unit time is the individual infected. And it's basically giving you the number of, of individuals that are going to be secondary infection generated by one infected individual. And when this uh, basic reproduction number is greater than one, of course, there's exponential growth. Now, um, I don't intend for you to read these formulas, but just to mention that there are formulas that provide in closed form the number of individuals who have been infected at the end of the infection. And there are formulas for the peak value and the time of peak value available for the scalar model. So once again, let me remind you, at the end of the infection, the number of infected goes to zero. And you want to know, you know, what is the fraction of individuals who have been infected throughout the evolution? Uh, there's also sorts of very reasonable questions that can be understood. You know, what are the factors in the infection? What is the doubling time? How do you reach herd immunity? So all of these answers are immediate in the case of, of the scalar SIR. But I am interested in the network SIR, the multi-group SIR model. And this analysis, I'm afraid, is, is not yet fully complete. And I will show you the results that we obtain in these annual review papers in 2017. And so fundamentally, the first result is that in terms of the basic reproduction number, you want to define the number, well, you want to define it as before. As I mentioned in the famous paper by Leimanovich and York, the right quantity to look at is now related to the spectral radius of the graph, the spectral um, radius of the adjacency matrix. In this case, we have a time-dependent adjacency matrix. And what we are able to show, just like in the scalar model, is that indeed the uh, spectral radius of the matrix is decreasing, and therefore the um, reproduction number of the disease is decreasing. And one can show that there exists a time such that even if you start at spectral, at basic reproduction number greater than one, in finite time, you are guaranteed that the spectral radius will shrink so much that the reproduction number will drop below one. After the reproduction number drops below one, you will, have, you will see a decrease of the number of infected. So let me show you also for the network multi-group SIR model, you can analyze the behavior above the threshold and below the threshold. When the um, reproduction number is greater than one, you have an exponential growth for small time. And, and, and in particular, the, direct, the, the way to quantify this exponential growth is to look at the left dominant eigenvector of the, of the adjacency matrix. Whereas uh, when you reach a time tau such that the reproduction number is below one, then in fact a related quantity is monotonically and exponentially vanishing to zero. And so this picture looks an awful lot uh, for the, this picture for the multi-group model looks very similar to the picture for the scalar model. I'm drawing single uh, functions and the way you aggregate the a number of infected in various groups uh, is, is very interesting and it has to do with the dominant eigenvector of the um, adjacency matrix of the contact matrix. Finally, we, are, we have been able to also provide an algorithm 
to compute the asymptotic recovered fraction, you know what I was depicting with the symbol R infinity earlier, how many individuals have had to go through the infection. And in order to compute that, we have we are proposing a, an iteration that is monotonically converging, is guaranteed to compute from appropriate initial conditions to compute this final value of individuals that remain susceptible. One minus that is equal to the number of individuals who are who have received the infection. Now, in conclusion, in my quick talk today, what I have done is I have reviewed some of the of the beautiful and meaningful and impactful history of mathematical epidemiology, starting all the way with the work by Daniel Bernoulli, all the way through the main uh, achievements of, over the over the century, over the last century in mathematizing it. I have discussed for you the basic basic SIR models, the scalar one, and then a number of variations. Um, most notably the multi-group uh, model in the spirit of the paper by Leibnovic and York. And then I have provided for you some analysis results for this uh, multi-group network model. And I want to conclude just by saying that uh, if there are still open problems in this area having to do with maybe algorithms to compute peak, peak time and peak value for the group multi-group SIR, which we have been unable to understand. Also algorithms, for example, to understand at exactly what time does the reproduction number drop. Um, I, I am unaware at this time of any work on analyzing so rigorously the multi-group model with contact and mobility. And finally, um, I have mentioned this paper by Donofrio that uh, highlights some correspondence with degree-based models, which are uh, widely studied in, in, in references uh, uh, in the physics literature. I think that that would also be a very interesting correction. So with that, I realize my time is over. I wish to thank you and I hope to have a chance to take questions from you all. With uh, best regards, bye-bye, and thank you again to all of the organizers.